Well, good morning. It's day 21. You may be starting to think that as you watch these videos, I wonder where Pastor Eric is today. Well, I'm at Benham Falls, and I was telling you yesterday that the road is closed. You see behind me the sign that says no center stripe. If I stand to the side, you'll see that uh, there's kind of deep ruts there. That's why I decided not to go down there because the center section is so high that my car might get hung up. It's not good when your roads, when your tires are going straight, but the center section gets you hung up. Let me talk about that in just a moment. In the devotion today, I talk about resentments, and I say that in my years of pastoring, what I've seen is that resentment is more pervasive and insidious and damaging to people than many other things that I've seen. Resentment. Now, think of that. Resentments have power over people. And because, res because resentments have power over people, it's really like a double whammy. You know, your roads, your tires are going, your road is pretty straight, but if there's resentments, it becomes that hump in the road that makes travel through life difficult. Resentments have power over people, and with resentments, you really need to think, who's in control here? Who is in charge of my life? Who controls my anxiety? Who is the one who is in charge of the way that I feel? When you think about it, you are. You Really, you are in charge of the way that you feel. If you feel anxious, <clears throat> you can blame somebody else. We always blame somebody else. But ultimately, if you feel resentment or anxiety, it's you that feeling that's feeling that anxiety. If you're feeling hateful, sure, you can blame somebody else and say, well, if something happened to you like this, you'd be hateful too. But when that builds up toward resentment, you're the only one who's in charge of the resentments that you feel. Let me suggest that your emotional health can be damaged because of the resentments that you might have that you alone are responsible for. You're the only <clears throat> one who can really follow the words of Jesus when he says, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. You're in charge of your resentments. Let me tell you a story. And if you belong to PETA, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, please pause and go on. It's not a totally politically correct story, but it's an, it's an old story of an African tribe that regarded monkey meat as a delicacy that they made for their delicious festival meals. The monkeys, however, were difficult to catch, and they rarely strayed from the safety of the trees. But the people of Africa in this tribe found a solution. With river clay, they made clay jars that were round at the bottom and then kind of narrowed up toward the top. The villagers took clay jars like this, and they filled the bottom of those with peanuts and then they set them on the floor of the jungle and went to bed. During the night, the monkeys smelled the peanuts and they sensed that everything was safe. They came down from the trees to investigate and one by one, the monkeys put their hands into the bottle and grabbed a handful of peanuts. When the monkeys tried to retrieve the peanuts, pull their hand out of the jars, they found that the fist that they had made in the bottle in the bottom of the jar meant that they could not pull their fists out. They tried with all their might and they could not pull their fists out of the jar. The next morning the people of the African village walked out uh, to the clearing of the jungle. They saw the monkeys trying to pull the peanuts still out from the bottom of the clay jars. They scooped up the monkeys, broke the clay jars, and carried the monkeys home to provide monkey meat stew for their festival dinner. Very simply put, when you hold on to resentments, 
like the monkeys held on to those peanuts, you become monkey meat stew. It stews in you. And the more resentments you hold, the harder they are to give up and to let go. Who ends up getting hurt? You do with the resentments if you hold them. Now here's my point today. Uh, last week, one of my points was don't be a weenie. The point today is don't be monkey meat stew. Don't be monkey meat stew. You have a choice over your resentments. You are the one who can let go of those. And when you do, you experience the transformative love of God. You can experience, once you let go of those resentments, the grace, love, and forgiveness. And forgiveness that God wants you to have. But boy, when your monkey meets stew, it makes that difficult. And that's the point of this devotion. It's difficult to get to forgiveness and healing when you hold so tightly onto those resentments. But when you let go, you truly can experience love, grace, and forgiveness. You can forgive then as you have been forgiven. For God's sake, for God's sake, for your sake, give it a try. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye-bye.